A warm welcome to the Renewal Conversations. I'm Dr. Ioana, and I'm bringing this conversation about the soul. And in this part two, how do we understand the existence of our soul? Is there such a thing as that from a scientific and psychological perspective? And really the broader question that we're holding in this five-part series is, does the soul exist? Is there such a thing? Can we understand it from different perspectives? Science, psychology, spiritual care, ancient Christian faith. And why does it matter? Can I just ignore it? Yes, we can. We can ignore this and not have one more thing to care for. But I find out when we do dismiss it and we don't care for it, not only we are at risk of burnout, but we live lives that are not fulfilled. Is when we're coming back, coming back to our soul, coming back to ourselves. This is what is the missing link. And it's not always talked in our culture. We talk about thoughts, we talk about emotions, we talk about body sensation, but not about our soul or true self. And I want to bring this to the conversation and the fact that in order to really regenerate and prevent burnout and achieve higher potential, we want to know this part of our inner universe. And if you don't know the soul, wouldn't you want to know it? What if that exists? What if there's something outside of us, our ultimate reality, that we're connected through our soul that way? Wouldn't we want to know it in our lifetime? And if you don't know me, as I mentioned earlier, I'm Dr. Ioana Popa. I'm from Team for the Soul, where we are trying to help compassionate professionals and caregivers to regenerate daily, prevent burnout, really complete grief and transform towards higher potential using many perspectives. And we do this through online interdisciplinary uh, courses. We do workshops. We do groups and one-to-one life coaching and spiritual care. And we also have a membership program for Christians. And you can find us and online on the web at teamforthesoul.com. Um, we are on Facebook as well, and also on Instagram and YouTube. And you can access many, many resources for free. And also, if you're interested in working more deeply with us, you can also find the ways how to do that. So let's dive in. How do we understand the soul from a scientific and psychological perspective? All right, so very interesting. I you know I grew up as a very curious of science and also art and culture in general, but I was drawn in medical school to learn about the body, to learn about our thoughts, and also through my psychiatric training, I learned about that. And I've tried to apply everything that I learned in mental health. And also I was the one that would go to church and find the different traditions and rituals very helpful. Nonetheless, I found there was a disconnect. Where was the disconnect? I mean, not only to, to mention that many times in scientific world, people ask me, are you a Christian? How, how come? How is that still possible? And then in the Christian world, I'm like, you're really a scientist? Does that really work? The psychology work? Medications? Do they really work? And I'm like, yes, it's possible to combine both. So the link that was missing for me, and I've noticed that it's I'm, I'm a byproduct of the different cultures that we live in, was that there was no bridge in language between how we understand our inner experience in the scientific psychological world and how we understand it from a spiritual care perspective or a Christian perspective. So today, as we're talking about what is this soul, I want to bring in the language that it's used in mental health and psychological world languages. So if you're going to Google it, if you're going to find that out or, or talk with some professionals or study it, most likely you are going to, you're going to hear about talking about what's called true self. So not all psychological methodologies would agree with this concept of true self, but it is emerging in the last several decades. And they're really brought forth by psychosynthesis, which is a psychological methodologies that emerged out of Italy from the psychiatrist Roberto Asagioli, who was very interesting how to bring this sense, this awareness of what is really very deep and intimate for us as a soul experience, as a spirit, also in a way that it makes sense psychologically and, and we can bring more work into research. In the other threads that I've came across was internal family system, Dr. Dick Schwartz, who's a psychologist, so he brought the idea that we have different parts, different reactions. As a scientist, I'm thinking it's almost like clusters 
of neurons and patterns that are forming our personality when we were two or five or in our teenage years. As we know, our brain develops. We have the potential for all our brain activities when we're young, but not everything is fully developed. By the way, as an aside note, we know now the frontal lobe, which is kind of a part of the brain that produces all the thinking and higher organization and functionality that we have as human beings, it's fully developed by age 25. So with that, it's clear that we are developing throughout our lifetime. So we're going to have clusters of neurons, clusters of brain circuits that are going to keep forming and shaping up and increasing and developing as we grow older. And Dr. Dick Schwartz, what he discovered is that in working in his clinic, that people are having different sides of themselves. I don't know if you heard yourself, but a part of me wants this, a part of me wants that. And he integrated psychological knowledge with family and marriage knowledge, family systems knowledge, this idea that in, in a family, every family member has a different role, a different relationship. And those roles and relationships are really important. So he brought that in internally. But what he discovered along the way was that besides those parts, there's something else in, with everyone that he worked with that emerged, that was calm, that was curious, there was a sense of clarity that emerged at times, confidence and courage and creativity and connectedness spontaneously. So past those different reactions and clusters of reactions with thoughts, emotions, and body sensations, there was a, something else, and he named this true self, psychosynthesis calls it as well, the true self, as opposed to our ego or, or false self, where there's calm, there's peace, there's no judgment, and that helps in healing. So it has a very profound implication that it's healing happens, we, we get supported by others on our journey, we get guides, we get therapists, we get medication when we need it. But there is also something inside of us internally that is outside. It's ineffable. We cannot really touch or pinpoint, but nonetheless exists. And there's been since then research that internal family system community have done to, to really show that the internal family system methodology is really helpful and working. So we know now using evidence-based that it, it is working and it is helpful and it brings a different kind of healing that is more profound. And that's actually the kind of methodology that helped me through my own training and through my own healing and also as I helped as a program assistant in many trainings to see others transforming and discovering the space. And it's so beautiful and it does support. And it's nice to know that we all have it. It's just sometimes covered with lots of stress, lots of thoughts, lots of emotions and conditionings. And another bridge that I want to bring that's emerging in psychological methodologies right now in the science is that this idea of mindfulness and you might not be a Buddhist or believing that. I think mindfulness in general is just a state of being. And there's been research as done as well in terms of how mindfulness, how healing it can be and how it's not just a thought. It's not an emotion, a body sensation. It's a space that we're in where we're aware when we are awake and every moment it's fresh. It's a new, fresh moment that can bring new clarity, new insights, new emotions, new ways of being, and including problem solving and connecting to our wisdom and creativity. So they did a lot of um, studies with mindfulness. I mean, there's mindfulness stress-based reduction programs that are very helpful. They can help people, again, beyond religion and beyond the particular faith that can help us to get in touch beyond with our body sensations, because most of us live in our heads throughout the day. So the first thing is, can we get out of our head, please? And can we feel our body? And can we feel our emotions? And can we develop this kind observer stand inside this awareness that is so healing and so peaceful? And it doesn't come with flashes and fireworks is more subtle, but we have access to it every single moment. 
And by the way, there's an other research that is developing nowadays who talks about and been studying the fact that we have what's called dual processing brain. There's one mind that is processing that is very much focused and oriented, and we use that every day, but there is a dual processing. There's another type of processing in the background that actually can help us connect with ourselves and is connected also with habits, keeping track of things. And it's also connected with what in the past has been called the unconscious or subconscious or non-conscious, which we know now that it exists, not only necessarily how Freud described it uh, more than a century ago, but actually there's parts of our brain, our mind that are already working and we're not aware of. And that's okay. That's true for all of us. So how do we bring this together? So in science and psychology, the terms that are used are awareness, true self, mindfulness, and also dual processing brain. And you may be surprised or maybe not, but there's actually research in mental health and spirituality. And I'm very pleased to follow the research of Dr. Lisa Miller, where she is looking at spirituality. And right now she's actually doing studies with with scanning our brain and accessing sense of connection and awareness and connecting with what's larger than ourselves. And she found that not only spirituality is a protector in preventing depression, but also sometimes depression, it's a door opening and knocking on the door for our soul to wake up to what is larger than ourselves. So all this amazing research that's happening right now, that it points that, yes, maybe there is something. Maybe we call it differently. I like to call it soul, but maybe we call it differently. But there is something that can help us in burnout prevention. And with that, in next session, I'm going to bring up the different language that it's used in spiritual care and also in Christian faith and to see the overlap And with that, we're going to be moving then to see, well, what do we do with that? How do we care for our soul? How do we care for our true self? However you call it, awareness in such a way that you can live a fulfilled life and be centered and prevent burnout. So with that, I thank you for all you do in the world. And until next time, I say goodbye for now. 